I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, kind of the past, present, and the future of document automation. And then I've got some distinguished guests here from, from our customers and our partners. Uh, they're going to talk about their journey in automation and how they've leveraged our platform to not only automate documents, but automate end-to-end -end business processes. So let's start at the beginning. Um, if you look at the history of intelligent document processing, it really started in the scanning world. You know, I personally, in 2005, was an IT administrator for a mailroom, where we focused mostly on scanning paper and converting that paper into electronic files so that you could go find those in enterprise content management system. And a big part of that project was Zotal OCR, right? everyone's favorite word, right? templates. And really, that was all about you know, just getting those key words so that you can go find those in that enterprise content management system. And then in the kind of mid-2000s, a little bit later in, in, in the 2000s, you started to see the emergence of what we consider today as intelligent document processing, which really is the ability to extract information from documents that are semi-structured, unstructured, without templates, right? So this technology has been around for you know, a fairly long time now. And if you look at the different capabilities, right, a lot of buzzwords here, a lot of terms, and I kind of put them into two different categories. Uh, the first is, is rules-based, which are typical things like zonal OCR, uh, and instructions, you know, key value pair, matching, things like that. And then you have a lot of AI, right, that we always talk about, especially when it comes to documents. So layout classification, I mean, I'm sorry, machine learning, computer vision, natural language processing, things like that. And you'll see in the market today, right, there are tools that can address all these documents that you see, correspondence, you know, emails, uh, any type of contract, as well as fixed forms. But one of the challenges that you'll see is a lot of tools today are kind of stuck in that paper world, right? If you think about it, they all started as tools to help organizations convert paper into digital content. And then over time, they advanced to add on more and more of these capabilities with zonal extraction, then semi-structured extraction, and then finally freeform extraction. But the applications themselves, right, architecturally, are made to process information in large batches, which is not a bad thing, right? If you've got a mail room, you've got a shared service center, you know, these tools are really great. But if you look at how most business operates today, it's really about the transactions, right? I, I want to be able to process a document as soon as it comes into my organization, whether that be an email and an attachment or you know, a customer in my store and I need to capture some information from them. So this batch focus really doesn't fit that model, right? Because you're either having to capture information up front in the, you know, as part of the business process and then send it off to another system for the actual workflow to occur or you capture at the end for archival purposes. And typically it's a very linear you know, type of process and it's usually not very flexible, right? You can't make a lot of decisions about what to do with those documents. It's really, hey, I've got this siloed solution that has this linear workflow and I'm going to process that information through that workflow. At the same time, these solutions being large enterprise applications, they typically take a long time to configure, right? Uh, you know, a large scale enterprise IDP project will take three, six months, maybe even longer. And a lot of that is due to just, again, how they're configured and how they're set up. <clears throat> so when we look at this space in general, and you guys have seen you know, some of this in the keynotes with document automation, we believe the future is real-time document automation, right? So the ability to process these documents in real time as they come into your organization. And to be able to do that, that's really leveraging our entire platform, right? If you look at our automation success platform and the different capabilities in that architecture slide that we'll see here in a moment, it really is a component, right? And the idea is that, in this case, document automation is built directly into the platform as a component of the platform as opposed to a separate solution. So what that's going to allow you to do is basically ingest or inject document extraction directly into your business processes. And that real-time document you know, ingestion piece really is you know, using RPA, right, to, to pull that information in. But there are some key capabilities I want to highlight here around document automation. You know, what I mentioned earlier with traditional solutions, oftentimes they are hard to configure. What we want to bring forth with document automation is the ability to more quickly set up these solutions. So we've put in a lot of focus in bringing pre-built capabilities to the table so you don't have to spend all that time setting it up from scratch. And that starts with document-specific parsers, right? So a parser essentially is a pre-built configuration 
to extract information from a specific document. So we have introduced our own extraction engines, a new extraction engine with document automation that can extract information from invoices as well as purchase orders right out of the box, right, with no pre-configuration or pre-training required. At the same time, we want to bring forth industry-specific, you know, machine learning models. We have a partner here, InfiniML. If you guys haven't had a chance to go talk to them, go, go, go see what they're doing. They're doing some really interesting things around medical documents, right? Medical documents are very complex. You know, they're usually very unstructured, you know, just all over the place. And they've built some really complex machine learning models to be able to extract information from these metal docu medical documents that you can consume directly inside of our platform. And our goal in, in the roadmap of document automation is to continue to bring more of these innovative solutions to the table that you guys can leverage, right? Uh, whether it be simple documents that you can address like with our, our, our engines like IQBot or uh, the new parsers that we develop. Or of course, or you can bring your own solution, right? If you have a product that you like today and you're leveraging and it works really well, let's talk about how we can integrate that into that platform. And again, you know, maybe it's, that product could be used for one use case and you have other pro or engines that you can use for another use case. And our goal here is to make this seamless to you, right? To be able to ingest these things and pick and choose which engine you want as, as part of your business process. And then action that, you know, across those different systems of record, right? It's not a linear process anymore, right? You can make decisions based on this information that's coming in, the document type, where it needs to go. Maybe it doesn't need to be extracted, right? Maybe we just want to do classification and splitting and then route those to people so they can work off of that document. This is the, the goal and, and strategy that we have around IDP in, in, in the market. Um, so th there's a couple really important features of document automation that I wanted to highlight before we hand it over. Uh, and the first is what we call instant feature enablement. Right, so document automation now is part of the control room. It's just one of the menu items inside of the control room. You click it, you can create learning instances directly inside of there using the new engines. You can connect to your IQBot learning instances that you've created, or again, you can leverage those third parties as well. But again, the importance is not on all the third parties that are there, really it's about how quickly and easily you can set this up and then integrate it into your processes. It includes um, a pre-built, uh, processes, uh, pre-built validation interface, things like that, all built on top of Ari, right? Leveraging that in our entire platform to allow you to quickly set these things up and get going very quickly. And lastly, the, you know, the UI you'll see with document automation, uh, one, you know, from an RPA developer standpoint, you know, being in, inside of the application, really powerful, really easy to use. But from an end user standpoint, right, this is an important part because, of course, not all documents are going to go through automatically. So we want to be able to allow the user to, you know, use their common interface, which, it, which could be the RE workbench, right, in the work queue, and be able to process documents or be able to process, you know, other types of work. So it's very familiar and very user friendly uh, when, when those exceptions occur. So again, you know, to highlight, this is really about not just document automation itself, but about leveraging that into end platform and ingesting document extraction in real time. Right, as part of your business processes. And at the same time, allowing you to bring you know, engines in that are going to support those different document types so that you can quickly set these things up and get going as fast as you can when, you know, in your automation journey. So with that, we're gonna have two speakers here, guest speakers. So we've got Vivek from Mosaic, which is one of our partners, and the Loan Store, uh, which is one of uh, Mosaic's customers. They're gonna talk about their automation journey, uh, their history in the intelligent document processing space, and how they've been able to leverage this platform approach to bring together capabilities to give them a very high level rate of automation. So with that, I'll pass it over to Vivek. Thanks, Michael. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm gonna start off with uh, taking you back a little bit, okay? So a lot of you are much younger than I am. Um, it was a brief, brief background. I've been in, in and out of the mortgage industry for, um, since 2003, so about 19 years, right? Um, the, I got into the mortgage industry in 2003 when we built our first, one of the first mortgage vertical BPO companies, including IT services and mortgages. Um, and that was, um, I knew nothing about BPO. I came from the IT industry, and the BPO industry is slightly different, right? Um, knowing nothing about 
the BPO industry, I asked a lot of stupid questions. In hindsight, they're stupid questions, right? So one of the questions I asked the team was, I walked into a meeting, we were doing classification. We had 40 people in India doing classification of mortgage documents, right? So your 300 page file, you're separating out your W-2, your pay stubs, et cetera, right? So I walked in the meeting and these guys were the people that were uh, orchestrating the process being offshored to, to India and um, I asked the question, hey, uh, what's, what are the metrics for this process, right? And they said, well, we, it's 92% it's SLA is what we're, we're going with. So in my naivety, I asked, why is it not 100%, right? So the answer was, nobody really gave me a good answer at that time, I still remember that, but the answer is really because humans make mistakes, right? That's, that's the answer, right? Humans make mistakes, and if you have a human doing this mundane task eight hours a day, they're gonna make a lot more mistakes than normally, right? So A, you, that's not what humans are meant to do, these mundane you know, rules-based tasks that should be automated. And secondly, bots don't make mistakes. They're programmed to do what they do, right? So I like to say that our OCR capability now, it's at 100%, as long as the OCR quality is good. Right? It's only dependent on OCR quality, right? So that's a story I like to get into, tell you to, you know, you've heard all the reasons why automation is good, right? But one of the reasons that it's, uh, other than you know, doing, replacing the mundane task, is that the operational efficiencies that you get that are kind of lost in the shuffle sometimes, because people just look at, oh, I'm re replacing a human, I'm using a bot, what does it cost? There's a lot of operational efficiencies that I can, we can talk about in the mortgage space that are soft costs that are actually translate into real dollars at the end of the day, right? So um, that's, that's really the uh, little bit story about that. So the way, the reason I talk about BPO and um, automation is because there's a lot of similarity being older, right? Um, a lot of similarity I see from those days to the, these days, right? So in the old, in 2000, 2003, a lot of folks were doing invoice processing, right? Payment processing, uh, that, those are the first jobs that were offshore, right? the horizontal processes, F&A, HR. Guess what's happening right now in automation? Every, every booth out there has an invoice processing example, right? You're doing invoice processing, you're doing HR processes, because those are the low-hanging fruit. Those are easy to do, those documents are easy to read, the processes are relatively standard and relatively simple. It makes sense to do, right? What we did in 2003 was we, did, we were a little bit ahead. We did domain-centric offshoring. Right? And we're doing the exact same thing right now with Mosaic by doing domain-centric automation. So at Mosaic, we do only mortgage automation um, on top of the platforms that we've kind of described. So it's really, what we're talking about is getting ahead of the curve, right? And not being with the crowd in terms of doing the standard stuff. You want to do, and that's, we may, we may be a little bit ahead of our time, but our time will, you know, slowly come. So we've, we're tackling a much harder problem. Why is it much harder? Um, and automation anyone knows this because I bang their doors every, all the time. Like, you know, we're kind of like, well, I don't know what you say, customer zero in the sense of like, we're pushing the boundaries of the platform, right? Um, because we're trying to do something that's much harder. I'm sure all of you know, have seen mortgage documents. They have check boxes, they have radio buttons, they have tables, they have tables within tables. Right, they're dynamic tables. You don't know if you're listing your assets. I don't know how many assets you have, right? So the dynamic tables to read off, right? So there's W-2s, there's bank statements. You might bank with Bank of America, someone else might bank with Wells Fargo. They're all different. So how do you extract data from such a complex set of documents, right? So it's a very complex problem. Um, and I will show you an example of what we do to kind of mitigate the problem. So I'm gonna hand it over, I mean, this is a pretty, standard slide, you know, this is kind of the manual processing repetitive task, and you go, what the demo that we're gonna show you today is really about intelligent mortgage automation. Everything that Michael talked about, we've built and deployed in the mortgage space, right? Um, in, even in terms of using multiple vendors for IDP or data extraction, in terms of using, um, having an actual process automation, and I'd like to talk a little bit about that uh, before I hand it over to Jag, 
when, when we're talking about automation in the mortgage space, some of the automation that we've done in the mortgage space, and Jag will highlight that as well, there are 250 steps in the automation. We're using APIs, RPA, at the same time, right? When Python scripts at the same time, we might be going to a website using Python automation, we might be using an LOS using APIs and RPA. It's very complex along with the data extraction. So when we're talking about automation, we're really talking about process automation. And we don't process one document at a time. That's the other thing. A process involves multiple documents, right? So I'm gonna take in 40 documents, I'm gonna extract three, two, 300 fields from those 40 documents, and then I'm gonna use those fields to do my validation and business process, right? So it's not about, oh, I'm gonna take one invoice, process it, do this. It's, it's a, and to orchestrate that process, there are multiple bots working together, talking to each other, right? So it's a much more complex narrative in reality, in the mortgage space, and I'm sure in other spaces as well. But it's a much more complex narrative, and you'll see some of that in action uh, in terms of the intelligent automation. I'll hand it over to Jag, who's our client. He'll talk a little bit about the loan store and himself, and then I'll come back and talk, show you the demo. Thanks, Vivek. All right, so uh, my name is Jag Chopra. I'm the COO of the Loan Store. I have over 20 years of business process mortgage uh, knowledge. And um, in my background, I, I went to a school up north called McGill in Montreal. I did my engineering degree there. And then I went to Arizona and um, did my uh, MBA in finance and MIS. So that's kind of a analytical background process stuff. In the last you know, 20 plus years, I've seen lots of technologies come and go. Um, I would say that you know, in, in 2019, um, one specific technology caught my eye. And can you guys guess what that technology is? Automation! Yeah, she gets a candy bar, we got a chocolate bar or something? Um, exactly, right? So, what we did then was instead of trying to inject automation into a going concern, into a company that's already there and that has people, has legacy and has processes and they're all jumbled together, we just, I love whiteboards. See that whiteboard? I, me, me and that whiteboard are, are, are friends. We, we built the company from, from that point, right? From the whiteboard we said, how do we get the most cost effective, efficient operation out there. So the loan store is a wholesale mortgage lender. Okay, so what that means is I don't take applications directly from borrowers. Borrowers uh, give their application to a broker and the broker then has multiple options to who they want to sell the loan to. And so loan stores be one of them. So we're licensed in 26 states uh, nationally. We're still growing on that. And to be operationally uh, sound and efficient, automation was one key driver. The second um, thing that I wanted the loan store to have was awesome customer service. And um, usually that there's, it's an oxymoron to have awesome customer service and be super efficient. Uh, because you need the same people to do that work. But with automation, that's possible, right? You can actually be very cost effective um, through the meaningful automation. And, and now I've empowered my people to basically, you know, help the broker handle. I just got another testimonial this morning uh, on my phone that the broker's raving about it. This was the first loan they did with us, and they loved it. You know why? Because my people have enough time to talk them through it and the bot, the bot is clicking the buttons. The bot's doing all the menial, tedious work, right? So that's, that's, that's what we're trying to do. So we, we try to win with superior customer service um, and keeping operational costs as low as possible. Uh, a couple of things I want to point out. Um, 10 business processes and counting. That doesn't sound like a lot. You guys saw the keynotes. These guys are doing thousands. Um, but these processes are very long, hard, difficult processes. These are bots in a meeting and they're all working together, right? You got the RPA bot, you got the API bot, um, and then they're, they're exchanging information one another. They're, they, I'm in a system where multiple 
um, uh, users can't work on the same loan at the same time. So one has to come out, oh, well, one, okay, this loan is locked. Um, it's, it's a very complex problem. Uh, like Vivek mentioned, it's you know, over 200 steps just to do one thing. Yeah, just to give you some context on that, you know, on the, in the fulfillment life cycle, which is you know, loan setup, um, underwriting, uh, clo closing, post-closing, and then servicing, the five different BUs that happen to be in most mortgage banks, right? Um, there, if, if I take a servicing, if I let, let, let those you know, end-to-end -end closing and funding of the loan, there's only about 30 odd processes. Depending on how you slice it, everybody has different. There's only 30. So they've done quite a bit in terms of automation, right? And they've, they've gotten pretty far so far. Uh, and of course, there's a lot more to do. But I wanted to give you a sense for what 10 processes means for a mortgage bank, right? It's about one third of their auto, end to end process, right? So. To talk about those 10 processes, um, you can see the benefits here, the productivity, uh, the straight through, 80%, cost savings, all that. Um, this number actually, to me, is most meaningful. Um, and it doesn't sound like a big number, 25, compared to the other numbers there. Um, but that 25% compression in the loan life cycle means big money for us, because in, in um, when you, when you lend money, we have warehouse banks that we have to pay back. And the faster we can turn our loan around, a couple of things happen. We get a better price from the secondary market. The loan's not sitting on the warehouse line where we're paying interest. The, uh, the actual the borrower experience is much better because now the borrower doesn't have to, you know, they're not sitting on the sidelines like wondering where's my loan and what, you know, do I need to get out? So our capture, or what you call our pull through rate is much higher the faster we go, right? But we don't want to sacrifice obviously quality. So that's again why automation is a fantastic tool for that, so. Um, I think that's, that's one of the um, softer metrics I was kind of talking about, right? Other than bots just being cheaper than having human workers, is that reducing their you know, time to close a loan has real dollar benefits downstream for them, right? Um, and you know, we don't usually use that in our ROI calculations, but for, for us, we can um, definitely use those. Yeah, exactly. Um, so when you think about the mortgage process, a lot of the front end we've automated um, a lot of the back end we've automated because those are more simple, right? Um, and now I'm working towards the middle, right? So getting into the, the more nuanced stuff and, you know, Mosaic, uh, you know, built an incredible tool that we're going to show you guys. Um, and it, it basically is like a it's, a, it's a foundational tool so you can apply it at different points in the mortgage process and basically it gets rid of a lot of the stare and compare stuff. Um, so you don't have people doing it, you have the bots staring and comparing, and then the bots highlight the discrepancies, so now the people just work on the, the discrepancies. Um, so we're gonna show that as well. So, you know, I, I just, I'm very proud of what we've done at the loan store, and um, you know, it's kind of what uh, Mihir said in the, the keynote, uh, you know, think automation first, that's how we built this company. So, very, very cool stuff, so. I think it goes next to the. Uh, so we'll just bring it on. You want to go together. on this one? Bring it on together. You want to take yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, I like to be on that side. For some you reason. got it. Uh, That's uh, his good side, guys. My, my neck doesn't bend that way very well. Um, so uh, we basically set the context. You see the evolution in the, in the market. We've discussed Mosaic's journey or my journey because I started both companies. And uh, we've seen you know, the IDP tools move from screen scraping into, to this. And you've heard a real customer story in terms of the benefits they've gotten if they used the automation first mantra, so to speak, right, uh, to do things. So I think um, in terms of, the, I think the, the, um, the real um, devil is always in the details, right? So I wanted, I want, I'm excited to show you the demo. But um, in terms of just mosaic, this is what we do, right? Um, we, we do our own process orchestration because it's very specific to the mortgage industry. 
We've integrated into the system of record, right? And we've obviously used automation anywhere to do the RPA as well as the intelligent IDP stuff. And then we all, you can't do anything without having metrics, reporting, et cetera, on it. And it's also very specific to the, to the mortgage vertical, so we built that. The one thing I did not discuss is why did we pick the mortgage vertical to work on, right? Does anybody know? Anybody have any insight into mortgage vertical? Why is mortgage, the question is, why is the mortgage vertical ideal for automation? If you can take this, what I'm gonna say, you can take it and apply it to other industries, right? One reason is, very simple reason, about 70% of the fulfillment life cycle is rules-based, right? So it's not decision-based, the underwriting is obviously decision-based, but 70% of these processes are stare and compare rules-based processes at the end of the day, right? So that's when the processes are li likely to, you know, very, and it's very paper intensive. That's the second reason. The third reason I think is probably the most important reason is that if I ask JAG today, right? JAG, what is your volume going to be three months down the road? He will not have a good answer for me. So it's kind of like saying, how much are you gonna sell three months from down the road? Well, if you don't know, you can't staff to that, to that, Request. So look at this example. If I'm doing a thousand loans a month, right? Three hundred thousand dollars per loan, that's you're doing about three hundred million in originations a month, right? That translates to about three point six billion a year, right? That's that would be a small to mid sized mortgage bank, right? Um, so if if you have a thousand loans a month, maybe you have hundred and fifty people in or hundred people in operations processing those loans. If you can't if, if, if in three months your volume drops to, instead of 1,000 loans a month, it drops to 700 loans a month, you have 30% of your workforce doing nothing. If you fire them and then three months later, interest rates drop and your, and your volume goes back up, then you have to rehire them, right? So that's a problem in the mortgage industry where you do not know how to right size your ops team for the volume you're gonna get because nobody knows what the interest rates are gonna be and what the volume's gonna be. You can take a guess, but you don't know. But if I have bots doing the process, you know the answer, right? I can turn off a bot, if volume goes down, I can add another bot if volume goes up, right? So that's the reason it's ideal for the mortgage industry. If you couple what I just said with the margins in the mortgage industry, the margins in the mortgage industry of mortgage bank are 50 to 150 basis points, right? Great market, it might be two, 200 to 300 basis points. But typical market, it's between 50 to 150 basis points. That's a small margin. If you, have, if you are a large bank and you have 30, 40 people just sitting around doing nothing, that eats into your margin. When it eats, eats into your margin, well, you need to increase your, you know, you're, you're, you're not gonna be the most competitive person in the market, and a mortgage at the end of the day is a, comp a commodity, right? You don't care which bank is giving you the mortgage as long as you get the best rate, right? So there's, there are many reasons we got into the mortgage industry, and then from an automation anywhere or just a, a general point of view, each mortgage is you know, 300 to 500 pages. You're gonna process billions of pages, so there's lots of money to be made, right, in terms of processing mortgages as well. Okay, so we're going to start this demo, and if you'll help me pause it um, when, when I need to, I'll just say pause, right? Okay, so if you can kick it off, before, uh, sorry, before we kick it off, hold on one second. This is a process called post-close audit. There are about eight processes in the mortgage life cycle that are all audit processes. Um, like Jag mentioned, we built a technology we call a checkpoint, and we deploy it for different audit processes. The difference between the different audit processes, it could be pre-fund audit, post-close audit, post-fund audit, um, loan onboarding, pre-underwriting audit, you know, all these audit processes in the mortgage space, right? Um, all we change is the documents that go in, right? The data that's extracted and the business rules. The underlying technology of Checkpoint is the same, right? So with that, can we kick it off, please? So what you're gonna see is the bot logging in and it's going to pick, there's a pipeline of loans, right? And then we're going to, it's going to go into after that. That was it's going to class. So in, for this particular process, there are 40 documents. If you can pause right here, please. Um, there are 40 documents here that we are going to 
classify first of all in this process, right? And this is what I mean by a process. So all this happens in an integrated fashion like Michael talked about, right? Everything is happening in, 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 as part of one whole automation process, right? The classification of 40 different documents from a mortgage file, you are gonna extract 265 fields for this specific process from those 40 documents, right? And then we're going to, the audit is going to do multiple things. It's not about just data integrity, right? It's not just about validating hey, is my loan origination system has the same number for loan, for loan amount as my, my document? It's not, just not about checking data. You might be, their business rules might be, we're checking missing documents. Are they there, right? It, did they really submit a W-2? Do I have the bank statement, the latest bank statements? Do I have the latest W-2? Um, mismatched data documents, that's the thing. But there might be other business rules, like calcul calculation-based business rules as well. So the audit process checks all of those things, right? And then it will, it will it, first of all, the next slide, next thing you're gonna see is it's gonna show you a list of loans that have gone through the audit process. So now an ops person, um, let me step back a little bit. This process in the BPO world, or in, from a human perspective, it takes about an hour to do, right, typically because um, you're checking all these documents and doing all these uh, business rules. Um, if you, when you use Mosaic's checkpoint, it's a five, depending on the number of audit rules it passes or not passes, it's a, now a five to 10 minute process. So what the, the ops person who used to spend an hour doing this now interacts with Mosaic's checkpoint pros, product, right, which, which we'll show in a second. So we can start it again, please, play. So you're going to see, um, we're going to move to the next step. This so you see the list of loans, and you'll see a list of the audit status. Could you pause it, please? Yeah. So it went, it went by pretty quickly, but you saw a list of loans, and then you, you saw, the, they picked one loan, and they're looking at the documents for that particular loan, what's missing, like the 1008 is unavailable, and you're seeing, the actual document with the fields extracted next to it, right? And they may, if there are discrepancies, they would be highlighted. Could we start it again, please? So that's the document review. It's, it's part of the audit, right? The audit is the tab on the, on the top, right? So you, you can go through this, correct things, send it back to the system or record or not, right? Um, and, um, it can be modified if you were not able to even extract the data, so it shows you exactly what's happening with the docs. And then I wanna go back to the audit part because this is all verifying data. Uh, there's a discrepancy here, we'll talk about that a little bit. So these were the closing docs, and you can see that, can you, could you pause it for a sec here? When, yeah. So, these business rules have passed, and that business rule has not passed for collateral. And then we're gonna go back to the closing docs, because the docs are also divided into different categories, right? Income docs, closing docs. We're gonna go back to the closing docs and look at one of the things that did not pass. Please start it again. So the ops person has the ability to go in there and look at this and say, oh, the DU says attached, the LOS says detached, so we're gonna to have to probably run desktop underwriting again, right? So if they run it again and they run the audit process again, it should fix that problem. And over here, the loan amount is different, so they can fix that as well, right? So that's basically, so your job, it used to be an hour worth of work in terms of running this post-close post audit process. Now it's just, you all, all you have to do is work with the exceptions for the audit process. Jack, anything to add? Sorry, I just went through it. No, that was perfect because you knew where to pause it and stuff. Um, you know, it basically is, it helps, right? It helps tremendously because it takes uh, the heavy lifting, gives it to a bot, and then that human is actually using more decision making and higher, higher ROI, right, it's stuff. And they actually, they love it. Like they love using these kinds of tools, they love using the bots, 
they actually feel like they're, um, they're like mini managers, right? And they're, they're sending bots commands and they're making, and the bots are gonna do the work while they do something else. Maybe they get on the phone, they talk to a broker and they, they show them how the, our, our platform works or our technology or they answer questions, they train them. So they, they become much more useful, right? They're not just pointing and clicking buttons, the bot's doing that. And in this, in this pay, case, checkpoint can be applied at multiple places, right? Post close is an important one. We don't want to give away money that's wrong. So this is one we want to make sure that we got right, the data is right. We have a similar one at Checkpoint uh, we call pre-underwriting. So what that means is before the underwriters, which are the most expensive resource in a, in a mortgage bank, uh, before they start looking at it, well, we have other people looking at stuff and sort of prepping the file. So the underwriter isn't having to do some of the more administrative clerical work. So Checkpoint is a very useful tool over there as well. Then you can get into the QC side after a loan funds uh, just to make sure things line up. But typically, I like to do it before we fund a loan. I don't like <laughs> QCing stuff after the fact, but you got to do that, actually. You got to do that for the auditors. You got to show that you're sampling a you know, 10% QC size to, to, your, to your, uh, your loans. So that's it. OK, I don't, this is, um, you know, we, Oftentimes we get asked when we're working with a new client on how we view processes being lined up from an automation roadmap, right? And for each one of these, wave one, wave two, wave three, this is the way we view um, the, if you're gonna get into, start on your RPA journey, do the classification in RPA, low hanging fruit first, then you start doing the data extraction kind of work. And this is very specific to the mortgage industry and different people do different things, but uh, because the documents in the mortgage industry are hard to extract from, we usually try to do the low hanging fruit with our clients first, give them some success, and then move on to the uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, more difficult processes. I think what we've done is some of these products that we have, and you can go check it out on our website, these are pre-built products in the mortgage space that we sell on a per file basis, like $8 a file, $10 a file. Checkpoint is a little more expensive, but um, you know, we sell these. We can deploy these in four weeks because they're already pre-built, right? So that's, the idea is, you know, you wanna get your ROI as soon as possible, right? So building these little products or little, 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 uh, little processes that are already automa automated helps our clients move very quickly. Obviously, JAGS and the Loan Store are thankfully a guinea pig for building. Mm -hmm. There are partners for building a lot of this stuff. So they get a lot of stuff free, right? <laughs> but uh, He gets my 20 plus years of, of process knowledge yeah, free but, too. But, so. uh, <laughs> yeah, it's so a good partnership. They're, they're, uh, they're in many ways our development partner as well, just so you guys know. Um, that's all I had. Michael, do you have anything? Yeah, yeah thanks Vivek and, and thanks Jack as well. Appreciate you guys telling your story. I think it's pretty exciting, right? We talked about how you can use a platform, right, to really bring different technologies together. And you know, one of the things Vivek talked about was you know, using our RPA components, our document automation components. He's also actually bringing other engines in, in, yeah, engines in as well. So with that, I want to open it up for questions. <laughs> is this a vertical solution that you're selling to many mortgage companies, or is there some competitive advantage that your customers like the loan store would get from the services you provide? No, if we sell it to many mortgage companies, it is a vertical solution. So our approach to automation is, is has been to build a vertical solution in the mortgage space. So we sell it to we'll sell it to any mortgage bank you that you recommend, <laughs> or anybody anybody any mortgage so bank that wants. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yes. I got a bit of a head start. Yeah, so for each one of those things I just showed you, we have product specs and you know, we'll show you what exactly is configurable, what's not. And then the way we go to market, just so you know, is we charge about five to $10,000 for configuration. And then after that, it's just outcome based. Everything's run on the cloud. It's $5 a loan file, $10 a loan file, depending on what process it is. So there's very little, you don't, our clients don't have to deploy anything other than a VM and sometimes we'll deploy it for them, right? So it's very non-intrusive to their IT environment or we just need to get a yes. We rarely talk to IT folks. IT folks kind of vet us and say, okay, yeah, you can use this. Uh, we usually sell to the CEO or the CFO of the
the company. So, so you know how much funding you need now to start your business? <laughs> You're right. I mean, I, the reason I got, I'm excited about this, really, if, if you guys are in different verticals, I think the team to s stop talking about invoice processing and automation, guys. Okay, just stop. You build vertical solutions in automation. I think you can do it. We've done it, and it is possible to do it. There are tools available to do it. So, I mean, that's that's where the real value is, right? In terms of the real vertical processes that you can do. Not to say there's no value in F and A and HR, but uh, you know, I think that's that's been overplayed. Minimal value. <laughs> it's been over, it's, it's been overplayed. That's all. Yeah. Any other questions? No, no, no. We got, in the mortgage world, we don't trust the bot at all, <laughs> right? Because if you make a mistake, it's going to cost him a lot of money, right? So we don't trust the bot at all. So that's what the checkpoint is. Checkpoint. You're, you're talking about one specific business rule, which is data integrity, right? So it will. So that's part of what the ops person will look at in terms of what what, what document wasn't extracted at all. Nothing happened. There's a missing document. It'll, it'll look at, you saw the highlight of the difference between the loan amounts, yeah. right? With the confidence levels, you know which, which fields they need to look at, right? And they're very, even if without confidence levels, the process would be and is that you do look at loan amount in every document for, because it's an important field, right? So you do, they do that in the checkpoint application itself. So that che those checks are done in the checkpoint application. When they're so auditing it's it. one of our employees using checkpoint, the bot runs, then, and it highlights the discrepancies, and then the employee takes action on those discrepancies, right? And the action might be fixing it. The action might be even leaving it alone. Uh, action might be, like in this case, running the desktop underwriter again because it said detached versus attached. They saw that discrepancy. So it might be many different things. It might be one of the trade rules, which Jack can talk about. I don't even know what they are, but you know, there might be some other business rules that are mortgage-related embedded in the audit process itself. Yeah, I think the key there, Vivek, right, is the business rules, right? Yeah. It's, it's about building business rules into the process so that we not only extract the information, but we validate, you know, that it's valid. Because, you know, the, the information on the document may not always be correct, right? And so that's an important piece when you, when you look at extraction engines, right? It's like, what else can you do around it? And the business rules are the magic, right? That's what the people are thinking when they look at it. So can we literally take their thoughts and make a business rule out of it? So you're coming back to the trade example, you can't consummate a loan uh, prior to you know, seven days uh, from when you took the, the, the application. So you know, if that date was somehow earlier, then we know, hey, wait a minute, we need to wait another day, right? We can't send that CD out that fast. That testimonial I got, I was telling you about, uh, got a, two hours before we got on here, the, the broker was, he was, he was over the moon because we, we took and funded in 10 days. And he's like, dude, I'm going to send you our loans because you guys did a great job. But we have to have safeties in place, right? There's a lot of stuff that happened in the mortgage industry, as you probably are aware of. Um, and so there's now lots of guardrails, and we make sure those business rules handle those guardrails. So. Yeah. We've got time for one more question. Sorry, maybe two. Two more. So uh, thank you, Vivek, Jag. This was a great presentation. I guess my question is more for Automation Anywhere, which is I feel like a lot of what we've seen is very much intelligent document processing, and I'm failing to understand the difference between what, what you know, the, 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 the title of the presentation was IDP is dead, document automation is something or other. And I'm, is the idea of document automation essentially RE, where you know it's, the, I, I guess I'm struggling to understand. Yeah, I, I can see how the title is a little confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. So really, it's about you know document automation being this integration platform, right, and allowing you to pick different engines, right. It could be our, our QBot engines. It could be some of the new engines that we brought forth in Automation 360, as well as like you know these guys built a classification engine that they use in the mortgage space as well. Um, but if you look at traditional IDP, it's really about you know, siloed solutions that are there to process, maybe it's a specific document type like an invoice or a more generic platform, but that platform itself is very, very siloed. So we're saying about document automation, you know, it, it's, a, it's a verb, but it's also a product name, right? 
And it, the product itself, we're trying to move towards that more real time, right? To be able to take information as it comes in. It's like, for example, these guys, you know, as these loan packets come in, to be able to process those immediately and distribute that as part of a, a larger business process and not say, okay, I've, I've got to capture the loan and then I've got to pass that over to some other system that's going to do all this other work we're talking about, right? And all these business a, lot, a lot of times brokers will submit stuff piecemeal, right? So we don't get it all at once. It's, so it's not a batch process. When, that's what I think of when I hear that. So like, you know, it's not like we, we got everything in the mail room and now we're processing it. it. It comes in live. So as that comes in, we know about it. The bot works it. A human cleans it up and then it keeps going back. Right. Sorry guys, we ran out of time. Well, we can take your question offside, but I really appreciate you guys coming. And if you have any questions, please come find us and let us know. Thank you guys. Thank you.